right, I'm here with Matthew Norgren, CEO and founder of the Arcadian Fund. Matthew, thanks for taking the time to chat. Uh, thanks for having me again. You guys are always fun to be with. Oh, awesome. So let's let's start at the, at the most important part. You told me you have a hot take on federal legalization. We're here in Chicago, cannabis conference. What's the hot take? Wow, that's a, uh, I know everybody tries to probably tell you, I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I think in our industry, you really have to try. And the reason for that is uh, timing is probably um, the most important element in an, a successful business as determined by a lot of great investors over time. You can kind of Google what led to uh, ultimately a successful investment. And of course you see management team and proper capitalization and you know IP and all that stuff. But the one thing that um, really a lot of people don't talk about is how important timing is um, in terms of a successful investment. And I think cannabis industry, you really have to try to do your best possible uh, to reverse engineer strategy based on timeline. Yeah. So if people don't give you one, then they probably aren't thinking about this in the right terms. If I had to do it, I would say uh, coming out of the gates in January, you know, you're going to have some tax loss write-offs and different things yeah. towards the end of the year. So I think the next 10 weeks are probably a little bit more of the same. Um, maybe you get some good, some different news from the FDA, and I think that'll be really helpful. Yeah. Going into January, I think you start getting some banking uh, no? okay. legislation that Going really through. opens things up, yeah. and that's a massive one. I don't think people are Huge taking catalyst. that yeah. as serious as they should. Well, it, someone it, was saying the, the impeachment news is kind of almost overweighing that the maybe. passing of the same banking yeah. act through Congress. I mean, it's huge. Yeah, and there's more banking acts to happen. Yeah. I mean, um, so all of that's going to shift uh, the sentiment in terms of major asset allocators being able to participate uh, and the confidence of large public markets. Yeah. I think then going into the election, you have a few things that you have to pay attention to. Um, is it a Democrat or Republican? Yeah. If it's a Democrat, I think all of us believe that it moves pretty quick. Yeah. If it's Donald Trump again, yeah. um, I think the worst case scenario is potentially five years from today. And why? Because I can promise you there's almost no scenario where he's going to get out of office and allow it to be somebody else that puts the rules in for who gets to benefit from cannabis and hemp legalization. Yeah. Um, so I think worst case scenario, you're five years. Okay. I think best case scenario, you're some, somewhere between two and three. Okay. And I think going into the election, you're going to see uh, those that are running for uh, the seat start to utilize cannabis as part of a vote getting yeah, mechanism. And you're going to start to see medical cannabis really start to look legal uh, going into that 2020 election. Excellent. That's great. I mean, so many people, like you said, oh, I don't have a crystal ball. But you have to be thinking about it because if you're not, you're going you're gonna to miss it, right? And you're not going to be able to catch that. So you were talking to me earlier. You really, you're, you're much bigger on the, the American market than Canadian market. Do you want to talk a little bit about why you like the American market a bit more? Yeah, we like the U.S. market simply because of the volume. Yeah. Um, and what you're seeing in large part in the markets right now is the fact that companies are missing their marks. Yeah. Um, and in, if you look at the world's macro uh, addressable market for whatever you do for cannabis, yeah. if you look at the legal transactions that take place in the entire world today, yeah. you know, 70-80% of those are going to be in the U.S. markets, yeah. probably more. Yeah. Even. A, a deeper look, if you look at California, California is going to represent something like 40 to 50 percent of the entire world's legal transactions today. And so you can't just predict what your future revenues are going to be and have companies trade on tw into 2020 year end revenues. Yeah. You need to understand what's happening with companies today. The, the investor base is tired of yeah. not knowing. And so if you're going to try to really hit your marks, you've got to be in markets where you can achieve scale. Yeah. And that's the U.S. today. And that's, a, that's specifically California, even beyond yeah. that. So and we're so, really interested in that part. Absolutely. And so obviously you guys are on the investor side. You hear a lot of companies talk about, we want to be in California. We want to dominate. We want to own. So does everyone. Yeah. Like, how do you find the companies that are actually, like, how do you look at the companies and determine, you know, do you even have a chance to stand up um, among all the players vying for market share in California or other bigger markets? Well, since we're a growth round investor, yeah. it's a little bit easier for us to say, Okay, great. You have a wonderful business, and, and as equity investors, we love everybody and we hug them, and it's really a fun time to be alive. But um, we get to say, okay, just as we talked about in the last question, what is your total addressable market for whatever you do for cannabis? Yeah. 
in the whole world. Yeah. What piece of that are you today? And they need to be able to indicate to us with a formula why they're that number. If it's 40% of all of it, why? Yeah. Okay, because I, I have X percent of California, I have X percent of New York, I have X percent of Florida. Um, so we really look for companies that are already achieving that. Yeah. And once they're in a position to have a significant market share, yeah. our job is to go infuse resources yeah. to take it to the next level. For sure. we're, we're not really the investor that likes to be early without a lot of facts on paper. Yeah. Once those things are there, we become a great investor that helps you get to your final goal. Absolutely. And so is there any, any companies you're, you're scouting out right now that you like the look of? Um, a lot of them. Yeah. You know what it feels like? I, I'm, I'm, um, I, I look at all of our companies and it feels like they're all children. <laughs> you know, and, and even though we have t almost 30 kids now, which yeah. seems crazy, it's a lot. I, you You've know, you busy. love all of them. Yeah. And the reason is because we're equity investors. Yeah. We're in these companies and we're with these founders for the long yeah. ride. And when things are dark, like we're in that alleyway with them. Yeah. And we Trying love them all. Out, some of them yeah. are two years old. Some are three. Some are 14. Yeah. Some are 10. Some are 12. I don't know who's going to be the president yet. I don't know who's going to be a first-round draft pick. Yeah. But I love them all equally. And so it's very difficult to pick right now. I think what you have to subscribe to is that cannabis is going to continue to grow as an industry, and we all do. We wouldn't be here. And we're trying to find companies that are not playing the get-rich-quick game. Yeah. We want companies that are building real companies and that are in this for the long term. And so if you ask me what we're most excited about, we're just excited for this healthy correction. Yeah. We're excited for companies to have to be real companies. For once, yeah. For it, for but that's time. how we've played it all yeah. along. So we just couldn't be more excited where the industry is now. I think it's the greatest buying yeah. opportunity and investing opportunity I've ever seen. Yeah. And we're just we're excited across the board for what we believe to be how we've played the industry for years yeah. now to actually be a reality. Yeah, absolutely. And so final piece, you know, looking at the industry, there's obviously a lot of different segments, um, niches that you can position yourself. Are there any that you think are, are underappreciated by investors right now, you know, whether it's cultivation, retail, the, so you, like what, what, what do you see as like an undervalued niche in the cannabis industry? That's a really good question because there's a lot of overvalue. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, it's only because everybody knows how big yeah. this is, and people are saying, well, I have the best chance to yeah. be an X percent how of the future the pie. least overvalued? Now? Right. <laughs> no, but there, there are a lot of undervalued. There really are, and I think those are brands, because okay. today, on the consumer side of the industry, you really don't have anybody that's won anything. Yeah. Um, so it's too early. I, I, it's too early. Yeah. And so I think you have a lot of upside value in the consumer-facing businesses. Okay. Um, well, they're going to capture a lot of the, the margin on that as oh. well, right? And you get big multiples when you yeah. hit that right. There's going to be hundreds of companies that are able to be first mover in different product categories. So, you know, I think if you look towards the future, the consumer segment of the industry is really, really exciting. Yeah. And not only is it undervalued today, you don't even know where the value might be. Yeah. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, I think if you had to ask me where the most short-term undervalue is, it's in these B2B companies, the service okay. providers. Yeah, cool, okay. Because as cannabis starts to become cheaper and more widely available, which is yeah. also part of the reason you see the recorrection. So an example these, being like Kushko for like uh, delivery yeah, I, processing, it, not Kushko necessarily Kushko is a great example. Like yeah. go buy that company right now. It's performing well and it's having a uh, headline you know, uh, yeah. risk that is not to me uh, all about what the business underlying value yeah. is. I think that's a $10 stock one day. Yeah. But Let's take a company like Work, which is a great company we're involved with that is a pay, leading payroll and HR okay, company, yeah. or BDS, BDS Analytics, which yeah. is a leading data provider. Yeah. These companies are continuing to grow with the volume yeah. of the cannabis consumers transaction that's happening. They're not slowing down. No. And while retail and cultivation and manufacturing are becoming more real yeah. in terms of their value, all that means to us is cannabis is more available yeah. and cheaper to the consumer. Yeah. This is great yeah. because all of our companies on the B two B side yeah. are just going Ty nuts comes with in that. And lifts these boats quite a lot. It's like if you know the Apple phone cost you ten thousand dollars the yeah. first year that they ever came out. Yeah. If you launched an app to be on the phone, you not you're not going to have very many consumers. Yeah. But the minute that phone, that platform mainstream. becomes mainstream and yeah. it's something everybody can afford, yeah. well, all those service providers that were built off the back of it continue to grow, 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 grow. Absolutely. 
And so we think this big second wave of cannabis exits are, are really going to be in U.S. markets and B2B companies yeah. as Fortune 500s who provide service to industries all over the world, yeah. you know, start to say, okay, this has gotten too big. I need to go in and yeah. have my piece. Yeah. Um, and so I think there's undervalue there in terms of the way those types of companies yeah. will trade with premium valuations yeah. in terms of the multiple valuation they get. Yeah at a certain inflection point. Yeah. Excellent, well, I appreciate the take. That's great insights, honestly. It's, it's always great chatting, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you.